FR Sky has told Banggood that they cannot sell this controller because it's infringing. Oh, come on. This guy mows his lawn every third day at 6.30 a.m. on the dot. And before this, he was using his leaf. FR Sky has told Banggood that they cannot sell this product because it infringes upon one of their patents that they claim to have developed. It has something to do with the JR port, but that's not important. FR Sky has blatantly outright copied many other companies and not cared one bit. So now they're trying to protect their market share and their intellectual property by trying to restrict sale of this product. And they're doing that for a good reason because it's a very threatening product to FR Sky. Now, something you may have realized if you've been around the sport for a while or the hobby for a while is that this controller is an outright copy of Futaba. And I don't know if it's if it's an actual copy. I don't know if a jumper has purchased the molds from Futaba, paid a licensing, whatever it is. It's straight up, co- I mean, it looks like a Futaba, feels like a Futaba. Everything about it is very, very similar to a Futaba. However, it's not, it may not be exactly the same quality, but I'll get to all that in a second. So <clears throat> I'm going to give you a little disclaimer up front. I've been flying for maybe four or five years, and my primary controller from the beginning was a Tyrannus, and then soon later I switched to the Tyrannus plus x90 plus and i really learned on on this thing and this is like a three four year controller it just stopped working because the enter button stopped working so uh it, it can't switch between models or do pretty much anything on it anymore so it's dead the um jumper came at a very opportune time and i'm going to compare a lot of things on a bunch of other controllers that i have here and uh i'm going to start with the gimbals because i personally think that the gimbals are the single most important thing on the controller and i think it's something that companies really don't pay a lot of attention to unfortunately or at least in this sector i'll talk about some over not overpriced (laughs) more expensive (laughs) sectors of these controllers a little bit later however there's a couple of of parameters or specific qualities to gimbals that i hear people constantly talking about which i don't i don't fully grasp because it's very hard to really understand what they mean one of these things is the gimbal smoothness people say oh these gimbals are so smooth when i i i don't i don't know when the last time was i felt a gimbal that had like sand in it or something it, there's no unsmooth gimbal however maybe i can maybe i can think of one aspect that they might be talking about the gimbal smoothness now something like the nirvana has a very highly developed gimbal that has quad ball bearings in there so it's, everything's on a ball bearing and it's it really is smooth in the sense that the the stick moves there's no stick to the stick at all like when it when you push the stick around you can move it like microns and it doesn't feel like you're sticking it's sticking and then you have to unlock the stick and it jumps to the next position that you set it to it also happens to stay where you put it which i personally would say is a very important quality because i want it to stay i don't want it to just flop around <clears throat> Traditionally, people have just taken the spring tension or just the ratchet, everything off of their Tyrannus completely so that the stick flops around. And you see, I have mine just a little bit tighter because I do like a little bit of feel in my throttle travel. Now, the rest of the gimbals, I mean, it, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't, I don't, I don't know what people mean when they say smooth. I mean, sure, it's smooth. I don't, I don't feel any, anything else other than the movement of the gimbal and the spring tension. So yeah, the smoothness is fine. The one aspect to gimbals that I am very particular about, and I kind of pride myself on my ability to pretty much pick up anything and fly it half decently, sort of, but I'm very particular about what I use myself on like a regular basis, if I fly on a regular basis, because I want it to perform the way I think it should perform. And that's that's something that I'm going to give you a, a really strong disclaimer here. I'm giving you my personal perspective only and you should definitely look for other people's perspectives as well. Because I learned on the Tyrannus, and I am also a pincher. And as a pincher, I I like long throw, long travel on my stick. And the Tyrannus and the X90 and the M9 gimbals and all those things. By the way, I haven't switched to the M9 because I don't like FR Sky. I don't want to use FR Sky. I don't really care about anything to do with this controller. So I've just been waiting for something to replace this controller with. The travel on these gimbals that FR Sky uses are the longest travel that I've used on any controller. And that's really nice to me because I have much more distance to move the stick in that control range space. So I, I can move the stick 
I can have more control of things like throttle and roll pitch, all these things, because there's more distance for me to physically move the stick. So I don't have to move it just the, the tiny tenth of a millimeter to get something to happen. I can move it half a millimeter and something that I expect to happen will happen. And of all the controllers that I've tried, that kind of sort of fall in the category to replace the Tyrannus or the X90 or whatever previously controller that I've had, there's really few that have that kind of that same kind of stick travel. I think there's um, some, not all from Spectrum, and I think again there's some, but not all from Futaba and some other places. But for the most part, I don't know why the gimbals have just been shrinking. It's like this epidemic of the shrinking gimbal. And the Jumper T16 is unfortunately no different. The travel on these sticks are maybe 85 to 90 percent the travel of the stick on the X9D. <clears throat> and when you see me flying, you'll note that <clears throat> it's much more difficult for me to fly in tight quarters around tight spaces because I'm not used to this stick travel. And actually what I did was I reduced the rotation rate of my quad to match the travel on the sticks and I just have a little bit less maximum rotation on this controller than I do on something like my X9D just because my brain cannot function in these exacting tight spaces when the stick doesn't move to the way I want it to move. And I've, I've been flying for a while now, so I'm not gonna conform to the controller. I would rather have the controller conform to me because there are plenty of other options. And I also think that there's a population of people that appreciate the fact that the stick has a long travel and you actually have control of your quad. Now, if you're a thumber, the x Lite is a very, very, very popular controller for thumbers because it just feels so freaking awesome in the hand when you're a thumber, it just feels perfect. And actually, it feels great for pinching as well. It's just that the gimbals are microscopic. It's just so small. I, I struggle to see how anybody flies with this thing because the travel is just so little. However, your thumbs can reach the entire range of the stick. And that's a problem that is common on any controller that's larger like this. If you're a thumber, you may have some difficulty reaching the far corners of the gimbal travel. So that's one reason why maybe people are preferring these smaller gimbals. This is something that may just be a pet peeve to me. I don't know. People seem to like the Nirvana a lot. I, I would like it if the stick travel was the same throw as the other, as the X9D that I typically use. So other aspects about these gimbals are these are not full bearing gimbals. They're actually, they say dual bearing. And what that means is that on, on these axes that the stick moves, there's a bar that it moves up and down and I think that means that one side is a ball bearing and one side is not a ball bearing. I, I, I honestly don't care. The centering on the sticks are totally fine. Again, I don't really know what that means. There is no play in the center of the stick and in uh, the configurator in Betaflight. I also don't see any movement or wobbles on the um, center stick. Something like my old X9D controller, the center stick, it, you see numbers fluctuate when it's in the middle because it's old and it doesn't center very well. Now, I know that a lot of new controllers have hall sensor gimbals that don't have a physical thing in there that measures where the stick is. It's uh, measured by magnetic inductance or the hall effect. And uh, that has a much better longevity for centering and maintaining its center. Again, I don't really see a huge advantage to that because Betaflight has built in stick filtering as well as a dead zone in the middle of the stick. So while I do like the M9 gimbals and some better gimbals out there, it's not, it doesn't really make me fly a whole lot better. And I, I am probably in the minority of that. It does not make a difference to me what the gimbal is as long as it has the travel that I want and I particularly like a little bit of gooiness on my throttle because it's just, it's, I like the gooiness, but I don't like stickiness to the throttle. And this controller does not have any kind of stickiness. Now, the one aspect of this gimbal that does feel a little cheapy to me is that the center, when you transition through the center, the transition point is, is rather abrupt and rough. Now you can soften that by lightening the spring tension, but when you tighten the spring tension on, on like an X9D, it's a nicer center transition. I really don't know how else to describe that. The plastic clanking against the other plastic part is not as um, jarring on something like the Tyrannus or any other Tyrannus gimbal compared to the gimbal in the Jumper T16. And in fact, you can even hear that. Oh, let's drop it. Yeah, you can hear that 
clearly. It's a little more jarring. This is a very personal thing as well. I, and honestly, it doesn't matter. It, it centers totally fine. The real issue I see with these gimbals is that the travel of the gimbal is not as much as something like the Tyrannus. And maybe that's totally fine for you. It's going to be enough for me. It's close enough for me to switch to this controller because A, I don't like FR Sky, and B, um, my controller broke. So I've been using the um, QX7, which is not very good for pinching at all. So, <clears throat> yeah. That aspect is, I think, the most critical aspect of any controller, along with the grip of the controller. Now, the grip of the controller is something that I have been very, very closely working on because I am trying to develop my own controller and it's come a pretty long way and I have developed a very specialized kind of grip section that's made for human hands not like animals of some sort because all these controllers have really weird I mean like what is this like who I don't it's confusing <clears throat> it's very confusing to say the least when you look at the back of some controllers and wonder wh what why is it like this anyways <clears throat> the thickness of this controller that position up here, which is where you put your fingers if you're a pincher, is pretty good. And when I grip it in, a, when I hold it in a pinch grip, it's comfortable. It's it's got the, a good amount of distance from the top here, so that I feel very comfortable holding it. It does not feel unlike the the X9D, so it fits the hand very nicely, very well. Next thing I'll go over is um, <clears throat> the general size. Clearly, you can see it's a whole lot bigger than the X Lite. You can also see that it's a whole lot bigger than the Nirvana, although the Nirvana has a long stem on it on the handle. And it's also a lot bigger than the X9D. And it's about as wide <coughs> as the QX7. No, it's actually not quite as wide. No, it's not wider at all as the QX7, as you can see. So it's not a small controller at all. And um, it uses uh, 18650 LiPos, which you cannot charge inside the controller, as far as I can tell so far. It has a JR port. It does not have a built-in radio transmitter in there. So you have it comes with a radio transmitter. It comes with a multi-protocol, which I haven't tested, I haven't tried, I don't care for. I've just used Crossfire. So uh, I'm sure it works fine. I have used those multi-protocol things in the past, and they work fine. However, I would have a hard time trusting it 100% on um, something like FR Sky receivers, because it's not the genuine FR Sky transmitter so maybe it's actually better maybe it has more power output but one reason why i think they may have, a, have omitted an internal transmitter is that it mitigates any kind of like radio wave agencies of any governments or countries so that you can sell your product everywhere without any worries because you don't have to get any certifications from anybody to say that you meet their regular qualifications or regulations whatever so now let's turn it on so another thing about the controller is that it's running Jumper TX. It's not running OpenTX. However, it is OpenTX. And the reason why it's running Jumper TX is because the OpenTX company, the group of people running OpenTX, has been paid off pretty heavily by FR Sky, such that they don't service other controllers very well. And a while ago, I made a post saying OpenTX is anything but open source. <clears throat> and to me, that's generally true because they don't, it's so challenging to get them to do anything for any other. The, the challenges that they went through to get the Nirvana out the door with OpenTX was un, unreal, unheard of for any company. After paying them a whole bunch of money, they did not service the controller and it delayed the, the release of this controller by several, several months because they couldn't get their act together. So on this controller, they just ripped OpenTX and made a fork of it, and now they call it <clears throat> Jumper TX. And I, I'm very sure that you'll see other companies doing this as well, because if, number one, they don't service anything. Number, You can't get them to do anything. Number two, it's really awful software for what we do. We don't use anything in the software. It's great to have for planes and all these complicated robotics and whatever. And if you want this controller for that, fantastic. Get this controller for that, because you have a plethora of switches and knobs and buttons and whatever. The screen is nice and huge, and when you go through the menus, <clears throat> super easy to see all the things. And um, let's turn. When you go through the model setup and all of the actual, I mean, you can see a lot more on this screen than you can on a X9D screen, a Tyrannus screen. And this, this screen isn't even all the way highest brightness. Even in bright sun, you can still see the screen, so it's really nice. I'm going to stop there. Like Everything else about the controller is fine. The casing feels pretty nice and solid, not quite on the level of the Nirvana. <clears throat> the Nirvana construction quality is just as premium as it gets to me. It feels like it's, it's 
cut from a solid piece of granite. This feels very good as well. It's very nice that you can just take off these rubber things in the back and change the spring tension. However, the spring tension I've had to put all the way up to the top, which is something else I also forgot to talk about. Spring tension on this thing is pretty good. <clears throat> It's not the best. I wish it had a teeny bit more spring tension. The maximum spring tension is just barely equivalent to the uh, Tyrannus X9D maximum spring tension. So it's just barely meeting that requirement as well. And um, yeah, we don't use anything else on this controller other than the gimbals and maybe a switch or two. And this whole screen being here is pretty much just draining your battery and making the controller a whole lot bigger. The roll wheel is nice, however, it doesn't actually move the, the cursor each time you click it, like some chargers that I have, and that makes it very annoying because it's not just a, a couple of clicks to get where you need to go. You actually need to watch the screen as it's clicking around, and sometimes when you go to push it down, it jumps to the next line when you don't mean to, so yeah, whatever. It's, minor issues. Not, nothing else really matters. It works great with Crossfire. It, it's it's fine. There's nothing else on this controller that's going to be a deal breaker. It's good for thumbs. You have to be okay with the slightly shortened gimbal throw. It's more than the X-Lite, more than the Nirvana. <clears throat> if you're a thumber, I would recommend the X-Lite, even though I don't like FR Sky. However, I do think this is a much better value at 150 bucks. It gives you a whole lot more functionality and you might transition to pinching later on, which I'd highly recommend. I highly recommend anybody just try pinching for like five packs if you're new, not if you've been flying for years. Clearly just keep doing what you're doing. You know what you're doing. But if you're new, I'd say try pinching for just a couple packs and see what you think. I've transitioned a lot of people to pinching that way. Um, yeah, it's got lots of buttons and switches. Lots of We don't need any of that stuff. They literally could have just hacked off the controller right here given us, I don't know, an app to control all the settings on the controller. And uh, yeah, it would be totally fine. Kind of hinting at something that I'm working on, the way my controller is hoping to be, um, although I'm not gonna be running an app. Anyways, that's that for this. I hope this was helpful. Um, ask all the questions you like, I'll answer anything, any questions from anybody. I, I couldn't come up with anything else to talk about that was really meaningful with this controller. And I also think this video is long enough. So. Take care. Don't forget to flush your teeth. Bye.